All right, Amelia, I've got Coach Hoiberg standing by here. And you can go ahead with questions, then we'll have Trey McGowan's after Coach. Great. All right, we'll start with Larry. Fred, can you just kind of give us an overall assessment of how you thought your team uh, played after the break? I thought we really competed, Larry. That was the one thing I was looking for tonight is to come out and give a really good effort. And for the most part, I thought we did that, uh, you know, especially in the second half. I thought we really defended well. We, we had great activity. We really worked on our ball pressure uh, the last couple of days uh, that we've had of practice. And I thought that carried over tonight where we got some turnovers. We turned them over 22 times uh, and held them to 33% uh, shooting in the second half. Offensively, we were better. We obviously weren't great with their free throw shooting and our three point shooting, but we did shoot 47% in the second half. That's, um, that's growth obviously from the first half where, where we were 25 and, and um, you know, had about as bad a half as you can have on that end of the floor. So, you know, there's positives from a competitive standpoint. That's what we were looking for in this game. I had no idea what to expect uh, with the layoff, but you know, I'm really proud of them for going out there and, and fighting and giving ourselves a chance. If we make half of those free throws, uh, we're right there. And uh, you know, the outcome could have been different, but you know, I'm proud of them for competing. Hey Fred, uh, do, do you maybe feel better than, than you thought you would? Uh, after this game, or like you said, you didn't really maybe know what to expect, but did, I know, and you want to win and all those things, but do you maybe feel better just seeing, seeing the effort and seeing the, the, the want to from the guys? Uh, no, I mean, you never feel good after, uh, you know, a loss like this, but there were some positives that we can build on. And, you know, there's some things we'll go back and watch the film on it uh, in the second half. And plus I thought we had some deflected balls that we just couldn't quite come up with. That, and then they, they hit threes at the end of the clock. I think that happened twice. You know, that's six points. You know, that's tough when you play a great defensive possession. Uh, and then they had a few of them in the first half as well, where shot clock was under five and they hit a big shot uh, at the end of the clock. So, you know, uh, again, the, the thing that we needed to do tonight <clears throat> was take care of the ball. We didn't do a good enough job of that transition. I thought we did a decent job, uh, better than we did in our game at Nebraska. And then, you know, 12 offensive rebounds. And a lot of those came in the second half. But, you know, again, none of that was because of a lack of effort. Go ahead, Robin. I guess looking back on it, how much was fatigue an issue for you guys? I know that was a big question mark going in. Um, I mean, did you notice guys getting worn down uh, at the end of each half? And I guess what was your evaluation on that? Yeah, I thought, I thought we got a little tired early, and I expected that. And, you know, that's that's going to happen, um, you know, with what we just went through. So, and we did get down 7 nothing. Uh, you know, I think in – Michigan State's first game at Rutgers, they got down, I think, 13 or 14 to nothing. And, you know, they got closed before half and uh, Rutgers played incredible in the second half. So, you know, there's some of that to be expected and, you know, not having legs. We haven't shot the ball well in practice at all. And, you know, part of that is as we get our team back in shape and try to get their timing right, uh, you know, you have to go hard and that's going to take their legs away. Um, I am concerned about Monday because, you know, we played hard tonight. You know, we didn't have anybody – with two uh, many minutes extended, I think Delano, um, or sorry, Trey led us with 30, 31 minutes. So we didn't get overextended with that. Uh, and again, we'll have a good mental day tomorrow. Hopefully get them off their feet, get them some rest uh, and come out and play with fresh minds and fresh bodies. We're going to have to get as much as possible uh, over the next uh, you know day to get them ready to go out and play against a very physical, tough Minnesota team. Michael, go ahead. Fred, what did you kind of think of your your offensive flow tonight? It seemed like even in that stretch in the first half, you guys were still getting some decent shots. Uh, like, mm -hmm. How did you kind of feel like it, it went, especially in the first half, I guess? Yeah, we, get, we had some decent ones, but I, I didn't think our flow was great, to be honest with you. And second half was much better. I, I did think we flowed in, and we had really good attack. And when you shoot 24 free throws uh, and get into the paint, not, not very often are you going to outscore Michigan State by 20 in the paint. And I did think our attack – for the most part, uh, was very good. So, you know, you just look at the numbers here. We scored 36 to 16 in the paint. We outscored them 17 to nine off of turnovers. And, uh, you know, we're pretty much even on the break. So, you know, we just got to find a way uh, to clean some things up to eliminate the stretches, um, you know, the droughts 
uh, that are hurting our team. But, you know, it is. It gets a little deflating uh, when you miss as many free throws as we did and we miss as many consecutive shots. And I thought we chased the rebound. We had a gamble. Uh, you know, Teddy gambled on um, uh, Aaron Henry towards the end of the half. And, and you know, they made us pay for it. You got to stay solid. You got to keep doing the things. I was, you know, thought we were very fortunate to be down 12 in the first half after shooting 25%. Um, you know, I think we were seven for 14 from the line. Uh, we made one three and we were still in it. And, you know, I told them at halftime, we came back from a larger deficit uh, in our home building two games ago, which was about three years ago, it seems like. But, you know, we found a way uh, to come out second half, muster up energy and, and climb right back in the game. And, uh, and that's what it's all about. All right, we'll go to Sam next. Hey, Coach, how did the uh, setup with uh, Doc and, and, and Bobby work? And then my other question was about Shamil Stevenson's performance tonight. I know the other game was a month ago, but this seems to be the second good game he's played in a row. Yeah, I, you know, Shamil's practiced very well, and, and that's why uh, he got extended minutes. And, you know, he's one of the guys that was able to kind of work out and practice through, uh, you know, the shutdown when a lot of you know, when the majority of the rest of them uh, did not. So I did. I thought Shamil gave us good minutes out there in the second half. I told him I wanted to do attack, and he did that. And he got to the free throw line, and, and he got to the basket uh, a, a couple different occasions. So, yeah, I was pleased with, uh, with Shamil's minutes out there. I thought our bench was was good. You know, Ivan, I thought, gave good minutes when Derek got his two uh, early. I thought Kobe went out and played hard. You know, I'm sure he'd like a couple of those shots back. Uh, you know, and then Thor's always going to go out there and be in the right spot. So, you know, a guy that didn't get minutes tonight was Trevor and Eduardo, and those guys are going to have to be ready with as many games uh, as we're going to play in a short amount of time. How to go with uh, the Doc and Coach Lutz thing uh, with yeah. the texting and all that, how'd that go? Yeah, I mean, we kind of found out before the game that, you know, we need to clean that up with compliance before we do that. So I talked to them both at length uh, before the game, but, you know, that's something that we're going to have to make sure uh, we're doing the right thing before uh, before we're able to do it with in game. But, you know, talking to them uh, before the game, uh, you know, going through the game plan, they're still going to be very active with that. So they didn't they didn't do any in game communication? Not, nothing, that... nothing in game, no. Gotcha. All right, for our last one, we'll go back to Chris. Hey, Fred, I assume kind of just a lot of mental stuff tomorrow as you get ready for Minnesota now and keep keep the guys off their feet as much as you can. Yeah, that, that's right, Chris. I mean, we'll do some things on the floor. We're going to have to to prepare. Uh, they, they do play different than anything we've seen on a defensive uh, from a defensive standpoint. They're really going to get out in pressure and they do a great job. And that, that's a concern. You know, we're, we're going to be tired, uh, you know, tomorrow. So we got to be careful. You know, the, the important thing is making sure we have legs, but we still got to clean things up. And, uh, uh, you know, again, but we'll do a lot of that mentally and uh, hopefully have legs going into the game on, uh, on Monday night. All right, that's all we have time for, for Coach Hoiberg. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we'll be just back in just a second with a player here, guys. <laughs> 